Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back to TFR for a special installment of Investor Stories. In this segment, the investors tell a story about some of the most odd and unusual situations they've ever encountered as investors. This is the segment called The Strange and Unusual. On today's special segment, we have Grace Isford of Canvas Ventures. Grace, can you tell us a story about the craziest, most unusual, or most memorable pitch you've encountered? Yeah, happy to. One of the most unusual, but also memorable pitches. Uh, I went over to a CEO's office in the East Bay, and I, it was the first time I was meeting him. Walked into the office, and I basically walked into an all hands meeting of roughly the 20 employees. And instead of kind of just assembling the meeting, he drew me in and I sat in like the middle of a circle of all the employees. <laughs> and it was, he introduced each employee one by one. And then he went on to kind of continue our investor CEO conversation, including a lot of kind of sensitive company information about <laughs> wow. revenue and metrics and, and what he was concerned about. And so that was one really memorable example because it felt like I was kind of in the middle of the group, but also how transparent the CEO was, right? He had nothing to hide from his employees. And it was something that I think a good way to think about just establishing almost that familial uh, culture within a company as well. Very kumbaya. <laughs> exactly. Did, did you guys end up doing the investment? We did not. We did not, but still uh, keep in touch with the entrepreneur. Awesome. On today's Investor Stories segment, we have Samesh Dash of IVP. Samesh, can you tell us a story about the craziest situation or pitch you've encountered? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I've, I've been pitched in parking lots before and in, um, you know, while I'm <laughs> trying to run to catch a flight before. Uh, I've been pitched by many Uber drivers. I, wow. You know, one kind of fun one, it's actually a company that, um, that I am an investor in now. It's a company called Amplitude. So one fun incident that occurred is it was a very competitive process to uh, do the Series C. And there were lots of great firms that were all circling around Amplitude. And I wanted to find a way to do something social. And so I'm a big sports fan. I'm a big Golden State Warriors fan, having grown up in the Bay Area. I'd like to point out I was a Golden State Warriors fan before they were good in the dark years. Uh, <laughs> but we'll take all the bandwagon fans. But I uh, you know, had a chance to... The playoffs had just started. This is 2017. And I was a big you know, fan. And I had a chance to invite the two founders to a game. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to spend some time with them and uh, talk to them outside of sort of a boardroom setting and even out of kind of a formal dinner setting. And, you know, they're, uh, Spencer and Curtis are just incredible. One of the, two of the best founders I've had a privilege to work with. So they come to the game and I'm sitting there, you know, as I'm walking towards my seats, the first thing I hear is, yo, Dash. And I look over and it's like two of my high school buddies. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. These are like the last people I want to see against <laughs> with two founders I'm trying to impress. And of course, I'm trying to do the like, hey, I'll catch up with you later. But they're, you know, three, four brews in and come over and start telling high school stories about me. And um, so that was that. And then uh, <laughs> the first quarter ends and then we go up and I see my cousin and he starts telling childhood stories about me, three, four drinks in himself, right? Second half starts, I run into my old roommate from when I was in my 20s in San Francisco and he starts telling some stories. And at the end of it, I went to Spencer and Curtis. I said, guys, I'm so like, this is whoa, you got um, all kinds of glimpses. You learn nicknames like Domes instead of Somash and DJ and all kinds of things that you know, <laughs> I don't typically hear. And uh, to give them credit, they said, you know, this is actually so great because we now know who kind of the whole you is. Your whole We got to see your whole evolution since sort of when you were a kid from your cousins to, to now. And, That's um, great. You know, luckily, luckily, they didn't hold that too much against me and we had a chance to uh, work together and partner together. So that was a pretty unusual one. <laughs> Love it. On today's special segment, we have Steve Blank. Steve, can you tell us a story about the craziest situation or startup pitch you've encountered? Well, the, the craziest situation was, uh, I think of the, my last startup was an enterprise software company called uh, Epiphany. And we were selling uh, software to the IT department. And we were very early on and we thought we had a great connection with the CFO, who at the time the CIO worked for. But they had sent us down to work with their head of database marketing. 
who we discovered was no way wanted our product because it was a package solution that was going to, you know, change the way they were going to do their work. And they were afraid they were going to lose jobs and whatever. But we discovered that they were going to pick up some other vendor to buy piece parts rather than our package solution. And my VP of sales was absolutely convinced we had this order until he came into my office and said, we're going to lose the deal. And the company was small enough that losing the deal to a big vendor would have been fine to, you know, back then an IBM or an Oracle, but losing it to another, you know, startup would have been demoralizing. So I said, call your friend, the CFO and tell them we're withdrawing from the account. What? We can't quit. I said, no, no, no. We, we can't afford to lose, but we can afford to walk out of the account. And, and, and I said, the odds are that your CFO friend might actually get engaged rather than disengaged. Hmm. Oh, we can't do that. Salespeople never walk away from a deal. I said, Joe, I can't afford to have our whole com- company be demoralized. If we lose this deal, we could tell the rest of the company we withdrew because it just was wired for someone else. Make the call. And make it after 6 p.m. so you could get the column at home. And he did. And my VP of sales called me 11 that night and said, the CFO just called me back. He said, there'll be a new decision in the morning. And there was. Is that withdrawing from the deal rather than, you know, and the message that got left said, look, we're going to pull out of this deal. It's wired for someone else. You know, your company won't be happy with the results and you'll call us another six months. But we, we just don't think it's it's something we want to participate in and and literally the cfo did the right thing and we got a two million dollar deal in the next three months that was the wildest thing we ever did wow on today's special segment we have mark suster of upfront mark can you tell us a story about the craziest situation or pitch you've encountered the craziest situation or pitch that i've encountered <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll give you a really weird story that happens to be true. I decided to do a charity event in which I helped, I think it was Jeremy Liu, raise money for a school in the Bay Area that the community was building. And I agreed to have lunch with whoever bid the highest price or whatever. So I did it and somebody paid and the thing that they won, not that I don't know why anyone would want this, but was lunch with me. And, <laughs> and so, so we went to this restaurant called Boa, which is in Santa Monica. And we came in and it was the weirdest looking guy you've ever seen. And I just, he was dressed in a, like a ribbed tank top t-shirt with his shirt wide open and his, you know, chest hanging out and an older man. And he's with another guy. And the other guy's telling me about this guy and saying he had, he's brilliant. He's a scientist, but he has communication problems and he can't easily communicate with other people, but he's, you know, a brilliant innovator. And these are all the things that he's working on. And it it made me so uneasy, like being with this guy who just looked so bizarre, like didn't even bother to wear like a professional shirt. Okay. Yikes. No, it gets worse. (laughs) He then puts his hand down his shirt, grabs his skin and rips off his entire face. And it was a prosthetic face. Oh my God. And... The whole thing was a ruse, like he had a normal shirt underneath it. And he basically, his business was building prosthetic faces. He really did have a social communication problem, so he wasn't able to tell it to me. But the guy that he was with was explaining to me that in a lot of war-torn countries, they throw acid on people's faces, and it basically uh, deforms your face, and they do that intentionally. And so you have all these women in Africa and India and other places with huge deformities and no way to fit back into society. And so his mission was to create prosthetic faces to help people reintegrate into society, which is a pretty amazing story. Yeah, honorable mission. Yeah. Yes, but it was weird. It was weird. It's so weird. <laughs> it was. I mean, I'd never seen something like in the middle, like with other people around me at this lunch, and this guy, like all of a sudden, like starts pulling off his face, and I, I didn't know it was prosthetic. I mean, like definitely something didn't look a hundred percent right, which is why I felt so uneasy in the first place. 
Uh, but it's pretty cool. Wow. Well, we've heard some doozies, but that one that one might take the cake. <laughs> <laughs> That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five-star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, go to fullratchet.net and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, over-prepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me.